Hello everyone, welcome to the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra's Rhythm and Recess video series. I'm Mark David, Music Director and Principal Conductor of the NSO. Each Wednesday morning at 11 for your recess break, you can join one of our principal players who will share with you knowledge about the instruments they play. This will be done by performance, storytelling and art, just to name a few. You will also learn about the origins of our Newfoundland music and many other things too. You can access our free, easy to download student resource anytime by visiting our NSO homepage. Click on Education and Outreach and then click once more to access our Google Drive. Once inside, you will find videos about the orchestra families and the various instruments, as well as many PowerPoints and activities related to composers and their music. You will also find lots of musical arrangements designed just for you. Thanks for spending your recess with us today, and now, let's get to know your NSO. That piece of music is by Johann Sebastian Bach, and he was a composer that lived between 1685 and 1750. And when NASA decided to send out two space probes in 1977 to, um, to see if aliens might come across them, they wanted to show what they felt was important about human life. And they picked certain pieces of music and sounds of nature and also some images from Earth. And so Bach was seen as one of those important composers, um, important enough to be representing the human race to alien life. So I'm gonna play you another piece of music by Bach. This is from the E major prelude for the violin. is widely regarded as one of the most important musical geniuses in Western classical music. So Bach was writing during the Baroque period and he wrote church music and secular music. He was employed both by churches and by royalty or nobility. So people 
like dukes would have employ musicians to work for them to play for um, special occasions and court music they would it would seem to be an important thing for people to have musicians available to play and Bach's um, duties would be to compose music and also to play he would he was a very good keyboard player and played harpsichord and the organ because pianos hadn't been quite invented by that point he was also a good violinist and he taught music to music students and he conducted choirs and orchestras so now i'm going to play another piece of Bach this is from a group of pieces called the Solo Cello Suites and this is a jig from the C Major Cello Suite. was a family business for Bach. We can trace back that family business to his great-grandfather who was a musician and his father and Johann's five brothers were also musicians. They were also all called Johann, which could have got a little bit confusing. Johann? No? Johann? No, I mean Johann. No, no, Johann. Hmm. Bach also had 20 children. He had five sons that became professional musicians. Um, and we also hear that Bach was quite a character. Here, here I'm getting angry with music students for not making a nice sound in the bassoon and calling, saying that they sound like goats. He's also got into a bit of a disagreement with one of his employers, a Duke Wilhelm, who lived in Mannheim. And Bach got very angry when Duke Wilhelm didn't make him music director. And so Bach decided to quit. Um, because he felt like he'd worked really hard and he deserved that position, so he wanted to quit. But Duke Wilhelm said, no, you cannot quit. And um, they had a bit of a disagreement and eventually Bach was sent to prison for being stubborn. But Bach didn't seem to mind too much and he, um, he spent the four weeks in prison writing music. And then he went to work for Prince Leopold anyway instead. Um, when he worked for Prince Leopold, he wrote lots of chamber music and music, much more secular music at this point in his career. Things like the Brandenburg concertos, which are pretty famous, and also the, the pieces for solo violin and cello that I'm playing bits of today. Um, I'm going to play you one more piece now, and it's called the Saraband, also from the C major cello suite.
Philip's last job was in a in a big town called Leipzig in Germany, um, and he had a job in a big church called St. Thomas Church. Nowadays in, in Leipzig there's a huge Bach festival that happens every year where they just play Bach for a whole week and people come from all over the world to listen to Bach's music. He's very, very famous, but when he, when he died his music was pretty much forgotten about and it was stored away, I guess, in the in the crypt of the church and and people didn't play his music anymore until nearly a hundred years later Felix Mendelssohn, another composer, found the score for St. Matthew's Passion, which was a huge piece by Bach for a, like two orchestras and a big choir that tells the story of Easter. And in 1829 Mendelssohn put this on in a concert because he thought, oh this is pretty good. This concert was a huge success and it led to a Bach revival. And um, since then, no one stopped, no one stopped listening to Bach's music. So right now, while, I'm, while everyone's practicing social distancing and I'm not able to play with any of my colleagues in the symphony or the Atlantic String Quartet, it's a bit of a strange time. And I found myself wanting to play lots and lots of Bach. Um, and I feel like I've realized that lots of musicians around the world are doing the same thing. It seems to be lots of people drawn to playing Bach. And um, when I play Bach myself, I feel a lot less worried and calmer and happier. It kind of brings me back to myself. And um, so I hope you've enjoyed hearing some Bach today and learning a bit about his life. And thanks so much for joining us for the NSO's Rhythm and Recess. Come and join us next week. Same time, same place, and I'm going to finish off with one more piece of Bach. It's a G major prelude from the cello suites. Mm -hmm.